and in one of my previous videos, I showed you guys how I study my Bible. Now that method changed quite a lot. If you haven't watched that video, basically I used to do everything digitally. I used my iPad and I used the Bible app with GoodNotes and I would take so many notes while studying my Bible. Now the main reason I don't do it that way anymore is because I am lazy. I wanted to say I got lazy, but I've been lazy the whole time. So I started thinking, well, why am I doing this? And once you can define your why, the how will be flexible. You'll be able to change the how as long as you're achieving your why. And what is the why with quiet times? Christianity is not about rules. It's about a relationship. And you cannot have a relationship without spending time with each other. So that is literally what a quiet time is supposed to be. It's you spending time with God. However you do that though, that can change. But like I said, my previous Bible studying method might work for you. You might find it very interesting. It worked for me for a very long time. I'm just in a different season right now. And so my quiet time is matching the season that I'm in. So let's be realistic. It is 2023 and at my church, I work with a bunch of youth all the way from young adults to kids and I have realized how very few of them actually have a Bible. Most of them use you version if they ever read their Bible and that's a huge problem but I used to be an advocate for that because my entire Bible study method was digital so I also encouraged people just use you version and I can't remember why but I got this desire to get a physical Bible so I did and I think it was when I saw my boyfriend working with his physical Bible and something about that just inspired me to get one I have to say there is something special about having the Bible in your hands seeing how everything is laid out the structure how it's put together for some reason you don't really get that on new version like you don't get that same effect that same feel let's start with my routine because even though my quiet time is more flexible now I'm still very much a perfectionist so there's still some structure to it I try to spend up to an hour with God every single day and I also try to do that in the mornings but if I'm being honest I skip that sometimes I don't do it for that long most of the time and I also oversleep like every single morning so usually it ends up being in the afternoon or at night just remember the why is to spend time with God and build your relationship with him how you do that when you do that how long you do that what you do when you do that that can change on a day-to-day -day basis depending on how your day went or how you're feeling just don't let your structure keep you from spending time with God because that's what happened with my previous Bible studying method it had to be this way and if I was too lazy to do it this way, I wouldn't do anything at all. And so the method I'm currently using is very flexible in terms of if I don't feel like doing this today, I'm still going to get to God. I'm still going to do something to spend time with Him. It's just not going to be according to this. So back to my routine. I would recommend you to personalize this according to your life. This is very much personalized according to how my day looks on a weekly basis so on a Monday I have my usual quiet time but then on a Tuesday I do something called reflect because at night me and my family have a quiet time together we usually just read Bible then from Wednesday to Friday I have my usual quiet time but then on a Saturday I do something called a prayer walk it's just this period of intercession and then on a Sunday me and my boyfriend have a quiet time together so this is how my time with God looks on a weekly basis but then on a daily basis on the Uvision app I have two alarms that go off every single day the first one is at 11 o'clock in the morning this is my prayer alarm and when this goes off I literally pause from whatever I'm doing if I can if I can't I'll just do it in the moment in my head and then I take a few seconds to intercede for someone else so if God's pressing someone on my heart or I had an encounter with someone and I really want to pray for them this is the time that I take to pray for someone else the second alarm goes off at 4 in the afternoon and this is my verse of the day alarm so if I'm not busy with the Bible plan I'll do the verse of the day otherwise I'll just do a day for from the Bible plan now these are two slots in the day excluding my quiet time where I just get to pause from whatever I'm doing and just quickly connect with God so I think it's very healthy once again sometimes I skip it sometimes I'm not in the mood to do it or I don't hear my alarm that's fine but apart from that I try to pray the first thing when I wake up and the last thing when I go to bed let me take you through a quiet time session so I'm in prayer throughout the entire thing so I usually just just start off by thanking God for the opportunity to spend time with him and then I ask him to reveal things to me or to speak to me 
um, just work with my heart. Whatever you want to do with me in this session, I just make myself available to them. So then I use my journal. I start off by writing the date. And then if there's anything pressing on my heart or distracting me, anything I'm worrying about, any questions I have, maybe it's stuff at work or at home or I'm stressed or I'm longing for something or I'm sad, anything that's on my heart, I'll just start by writing that down. So I also love memorizing Bible verses and I got this desire to read Proverbs and Psalms while I'm reading the rest of my Bible. So I'm doing this thing where I do a verse of the month, a proverb of the week and a psalm of the day. So when I encounter a verse that I really want to memorize, it's super practical, I want to apply it to my life or it's a concept that's super profound, I'll usually create a verse image of it on the YouVersion app and then on the first day of every single month, I'll choose one of those images and I will memorize it throughout the month. On the first day, I'll write it down in my quiet time journal, but for the rest of the month, I'll just read through it again. Then for the proverb of the week, on a Monday, I just go through the proverbs and when I find one, I want to apply this week and memorize I'll write it down on a Monday once again just on a Monday for the rest of the week I'll just read through it again and then for the Psalms I read a chapter of the Psalms every single day and then I'll pick one of the verses in that chapter to write down for that day so on a monthly basis I do a verse on a weekly basis I do a proverbs and then on a daily basis I read through one of the chapters in Psalms then after that I like to go into prayer and I use the prayer list on you version for that there's three categories of prayers that I like doing in my quiet time and there's scripture to back it up as well the first one is confessions anything that I want to confess to God if I'm feeling guilty about anything I just like to get that off of my chest in this section in Psalms 139 verse 23 to 24 it says, search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there's any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. So this is just like the motive behind why I want to do this prayer. After confessions, I do gratitude. I just like to name one thing that I'm grateful for. In 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 18, it says, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. After that, I do petition. So if there's anything I want to ask God for, any request someone has taken to him, I'll do it here. In Philippians 4 verse 6 to 7, it says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So if I have something to confess, I'll do this. If I have something to ask for, I'll do this. This is not a must. This is just a guideline in my prayer. If I want to pray for something, I'll have a tab for it. But I added two new tabs and the first one is testimonies. So it's just very important to record what God does for you in your life. And it's very cool and profound to be able to look back on that and just remind yourself how faithful God is. So if I notice how God did something to me, I'll put it here under testimonies. And then the second one is revelation. So if someone prophesies to me or gives me a word, or maybe the Holy Spirit just reveals something to me or says something to me, I like to record that as well because it's very noticeable when this was the Holy spirit saying this to you and I don't really want to forget that so I just also have a tab for that I don't go through every single tab in my quiet time it's usually just those three and then when I feel like praying for something else I'll do it as well the rest of my quiet time is usually Bible reading so I'm currently busy reading the Bible from the start to the finish I do not recommend doing that if you haven't read the New Testament yet you'll just get confused and things won't make sense but I'm currently doing that because that is particularly how this Bible is designed so if you want to know more about this Bible as I said I'm gonna make a video about it so I'm gonna try and read through the entire Bible this year so I'm trying to read at least two to three chapters every single day when I do my quiet time so I'll just write down the book and the chapters that I'm going to read and then when I find something cool throughout the chapters which is noteworthy I'll just make a note of it otherwise I'm still using you version like I showed you in my previous video and then after reading through the chapters I like to summarize it in a small sentence and then I just write it next to the book name and chapter numbers so that's how I'm currently reading my Bible but when I'm done going through the entire thing I'm gonna start studying book for book again and then once again this is gonna look a bit different because then I'm gonna do more in-depth study like I used to do it in my previous video but for now and this season this is how I'm doing it so I forgot to explain why I decided to stop doing in-depth Bible studying for a season and the main reason was because when I got my physical Bible and I saw how things were actually laid out I just wanted to read it for what it is because when you're studying the Bible and dissecting verse for verse and reading commentaries you're going so into detail that it's very hard to see the bigger picture and just read the chapter or the book 
as a whole. So that's what I'm focusing on for this season. Then I like to end off my quiet time with five minutes. I literally put on a timer, five minutes where I'm not allowed to do anything. I have to try and sit still and just focus on God, clear my mind of everything. And this is just a time that I like to use to give God the opportunity to speak to me. Because our quiet time can easily get us just reading a bunch of stuff or doing a bunch of things or speaking to God and we don't actually get still and get quiet so that God can speak to us. So I just like to add that at the end of my quiet time just to give God the opportunity. Some days I'm too tired to do this and then I just put on a few worship songs and I worship. Some days I just feel like praying so I just pray for a few minutes. This is the ideal structure that I want to follow but I'm not going to let this structure cause me to not do my quiet time because I'm too lazy to go through all of this. I don't like writing in my Bible. It does have space for that however to journal on the sides but I'm too much of a perfectionist because if I mess one thing up I'm going to want to throw the entire thing away so I'm just not doing that I'm considering starting to write with a pencil but because I use Uvision I don't really have the need for that what I do use is sticky notes if I read something which I want to make stand out I won't highlight I'll just stick one of these next to the verse when it comes to Uvision on the Bible app as I said it's exactly the same my color codes are as follows pink to orange is God's character, yellow to green is confusion and questions, turquoise is guides for life, do's and don'ts, light blue is themes, dark blue is my identity in Christ, purple is anything profound or cool that I read in the Bible. Once again, I'll just highlight a verse if it falls into one of these categories on the Bible app. If I want to categorize something into a theme with light blue, that's what I use bookmarks for so that I can see what I've read in the Bible on a specific topic and just search that in the Bible app. And then notes I use when I want to add something to a verse, add my thoughts, something I've heard, uh, something I've seen while studying the Bible. If I have a question, I'll usually just add that in notes. And that is more or less how I use the Bible app. Let's quickly talk about the reflecting session I have on a Tuesday. I decided to incorporate this into my quiet time routine because I realized that if you just write a bunch of things down and you read so many stuff and you take note of it, but you never actually go back to it to read over it again, there's no point in, first of all, keeping a journal and you'll miss patterns in your thinking or what God is trying to tell you repeatedly or what you've been going through repeatedly. So it's very healthy to go back on what you went through and what God was telling you. So I'll literally start at the previous Tuesday in my journal and I'll just read through everything up until this Tuesday that I'm doing the reflecting session and just read everything I wrote. Then I'll go on the Bible app, I'll go through my feed for the past week as well and read through all of the bookmarks and notes I made. So then I also do this thing when I'm listening to a sermon or I'm at a conference and I feel like taking notes of what the speaker is saying. I'll also usually use this session to read through one of those notes. At the end of each year, I also like to look back through everything I've written that year and I'll add bookmarks to anything important or special. As I said, Tuesday evenings, I read Bible with my family. So that's where I get my Bible reading in on that day. So then on a Saturday when I'm doing my prayer walk, if I'm being realistic, I really do the walking. I usually just like sit down and pray. If I'm being totally honest, I skip this most of the time, which is very bad. I want to incorporate this in my Saturdays. First of all, prayer is so powerful. And I also realized I don't really pray for ministries, for my church, for the world, for my friends and my family. So I really wanted to dedicate a spot where I do this. And that is what my Saturdays are. If you don't know what a prayer walk is, it's literally where you go for a walk. And as you go for the walk, you talk to Jesus. It's as simple as that. Week one of the month, I pray for my inner circle. So this is my family, my close friends, and the people I'm discipling. The second week of the month, I pray for my outer circle. These are my friends, my colleagues, and acquaintances, people that I just know of. Week three, I pray for ministries. I pray for the young adults. I pray for our teen ministry, Fusion. I pray for our school ministries, Tree. And then I also pray for Alberton Unite, which is a movement here where I stay, where all of the churches combine together. So I'll just also pray for that. In week four, I pray for my church. I'm in Doxadeo, but then I also pray for the church, like capital C church, Christians all over the world. Week five, there's not a lot of months that have a week five. So if there is a week five, I'll also just pray for the world. Anything that's happening right now, we have lots of load shedding in South Africa or, you know, the earthquake that happened in Turkey. I'll pray for things like that in week five. On a Sunday, when me and my boyfriend have quiet time together, we have our own separate quiet time routine structure thingy that we do. If you're interested in learning how to do a quiet time with your partner, I'd love to do a video about that as well. If you're struggling with prioritizing God on a day-to-day -day basis, I'm I'm also struggling with that don't worry um 
I don't even know what to say. Just have the discipline. Yes. <laughs> My boyfriend always says discipline gets you to open the Bible and desire gets you to flip the page. <laughs>